Today we're going to look at an audio upgrade for this 67 International. It's a half ton, pretty basic inside. We've just got the AM radio with the single speaker. And, you know, the radio turns on, but I've never been able to get decent sound out of it. It's really quiet, it's scratchy, and it's AM. So what I'd like to do is modify this so that I can hook it up with my Bluetooth on my phone. And I'm going to do that for less than $12. I have the radio out and this is my plan. I picked this Bluetooth amplifier up on Amazon for under $12. It's pretty simple. All it's got is a volume control, power, and speakers. What I'd like to do is remove my volume control off of the radio and put this in the case so that basically this volume control still works just like the old one. It's going to look just like the factory radio. Now this comes with some challenges. Uh, mainly, uh, this stock here is not nearly as long as this one. So I've got to figure out how I'm going to make this work here and make it all fit. And secondly, that's my stock knob. That's got to go on to here, so we'll figure it out. Let's take this thing apart. This might come apart no, that's about as far as it wants to go, so I'm going to have to pull the top off. Two more. We're in. All right, we got a good start. Now this guy comes all the way through here. I need to remove this piece. So I got a good start on disassembly. I gutted everything. And for anybody that uh, thinks I should just keep this intact, there's lots of these radios floating around. I don't think anybody's going to miss this one. Nobody would have gone to the trouble to repair it anyway. So I've got my face on this thing now, and this is where I want to spend my time. There's a couple of things I'd like to do. Number one, I'd like to keep um, power to this so that it lights up um, when I turn on the truck. And I tested it, and this lead um, is what, you probably can't see it, but lights up that little bulb. And I'm going to leave this part of the unit intact because it's got the buttons that still work and I could still turn that dial just for aesthetics. 
So I just need to pop this out now. And this should be fairly easy. There's just a couple of retaining clips here. Once I bust those loose, there. That pulls out very nicely. I'm gonna hang on to this because I may need to reuse some of this shaft in order to make this work. Now let me show you what I was talking about as far as fitment. Um, I'm thinking I can drop this in here. That fits nicely, but you can see there's not even enough of a shaft sticking out there uh, to, to really do anything. So that'll be the next problem we solve. All right, I'm going to hang on to this housing because this actually has these clips that lock into there. Uh, that might be useful to me. So I'm going to try to separate this. It looks like it's got maybe just these little tabs here. Let's see if we can uh, pry those free. All right, so that's the inner. That's the outer. We're going to need both of these. So I think I'm going to keep this as it is right now. All right, so ultimately I want this to fit up inside there. And it wouldn't have to go any further than this. Um, but this hole is too small and I think this end is about the same as the outer diameter of this piece. So I can't drill all the way through to have this fit up in there. So I think the next thing I can do is maybe slim this down a little bit. I'll keep the slot in there because I think that slot is what I'm going to use to join these two somehow. All right, let me show you how far I've gotten on this. I completely gutted that switch mechanism. And this is the piece right here, along with this, that snaps into here. So this edge right there is my reference. It should sit pretty close to tight against there. So I know what my depth is on this. So next thing I'll do is I'll run my switch through here. Where is this here? I'll just give you an idea of what I'm doing here. There we go. So we can fasten this together. Then this piece goes back on. This retainer goes back on. And this is what holds it together. Now this other piece, my outer ring, all I did is just trim that short. This doesn't need to do anything. It has no function. It just needs to be secure. So, and I don't want this to interfere with this. So these two together shouldn't really touch. So what I've done is trim this back to where I think it needs to be. That just fits in there and, and stays there. Now here's the secret sauce. Um, I'm going to retain this shaft for my volume control. That goes all the way in, but you can see it sticks out quite a ways. What I think I'll do with this one is I've already looked to see how far this will reach into there. And it looks like it's about the area that's knurled here. So what I'm going to do is mark this to see where it lands in relationship to this. I'll cut it off. And then I'll dremel out a little flat spot that can slot in here. And I'll make it fairly snug so that at least the friction will hold it in. 
But I think that's what I'm going to do to get this thing together. And then this fits in here really nicely. It just tucks right in. Okay, we got it all together here. Got this piece back together. I took this shaft and sanded down a, a blade onto it, if you can kind of see that. So, this should be pretty simple. All we got to do is snap that into place. That's secure. Now we put our dead knob on and then finally our on off in volume there that works nice and hidden all I got to do here is I'll take it back apart and wire this so what I'm going to do is run my speaker wires out of here um, I'm going to run my power into this and I've got a I've got a plug that came with this unit that just goes in there, so I just need a ground and a switched power. And then the other thing I'm going to do is probably tie this in so that I've got uh, radio lights as well. All right, we're all done with wiring. Uh, so what I did was wired in the power plug here. One end goes to a fuse that's already existing in the truck that the radio was using. The other one goes to this power plug. And I wide in the light there. I looked forever on this thing. I can't find um, a hot just when the switch is on. So the compromise here is when the key is on, the light will be on for this. I don't have it tied to the switch, but that's okay, I just wanted to do that. So the next thing I need to do is get this thing hooked back up. I've already got my wires on here for right and left speakers. So let's pull it together. This just snaps right in. There, that's locked in. Okay, we're good there. All right, looks like factory radio, only it's a Bluetooth head unit now. All right, I got my wiring hooked up. All we have to do is put the radio back in now. All right, let's give it a try.
Now, just a couple of things. I know sometimes people complain about these units they buy because they come up and have all kinds of talking, you know, do you want to connect and things like that, power up. This one just makes a few sounds. The first one is a power up, and the next one will be Bluetooth connecting. That's it. All right, not too bad. Again, less than 12 bucks. Nineteen sixty-seven meets twenty twenty-three. A very stock sixty-seven international pickup with a Bluetooth head unit instead of an AM radio. Now, this was pretty easy. And now I can play. Pandora, iHeartRadio, YouTube Music, anything else I want. I will leave a link down in the description of this video uh, for the unit that I purchased to put in here. And I encourage everybody to give it a try. It's not that difficult.